me to go through this. And Paul is saying that comparatively in what he, what God has promised us in verse 18, he says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present age cannot be compared to what he has set aside for us. Now, let me talk a little bit about this because uh, many times we begin to wonder why must a child of God suffer? Why? And I remember those days when we were young and they were preaching to us. They tell us that heaven is full of everything. You give your life, everything will be good. All is well. The, it, it just, just, just believe Christ and all will be flowing. We were told that. And then you come in, things flip upside down. The, the chaos, total chaos. The devil unleashed their armory. Now the devil sees what you, what you, where you're going and what you have. And now the charge gets even fierce. But let me tell you, the God you serve is aware of it. God knows exactly what we go through. Oh my God, you're not, you're not getting it. I say God understands what we go through. Because the suffering of this present time cannot be compared with what we, what we have and where we're going. God has set such a great thing for us, mighty blessing, that we will get and we will enjoy not only beyond, but even at this present time. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Let me, I want to encourage you. This is to strengthen your faith. God knows what you're going through. He is not asleep. In Psalm 121, when you read verse 4, the Bible says that God that delivered Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. He is aware. He knows exactly what is going on around you. He knows exactly the pain that you have. Don't wonder why will this pain be on me for all this length of time in my life. You are only on earth for just a couple of tens of years. But you have eternity to live thousands upon thousands of years to come. Why would you be concerned about 70, 80, 90 years of little suffering on earth? And you forget that you have an eternity of blessing God is giving to us. Somebody say amen. amen. I will not let this deviate my concentration. I will not let the pains that I have change where I'm going. It will come, the sufferings will come, the pain will come. But I know that God has a better place for me. He has a better goal for me. He has a better thing for me. Somebody help me say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to slow down because it seems like I'm preaching here. I, want to, I just want us to get this. I want to encourage us. Please help me with another paper towel, please. I want to encourage us here. Let's go back to where we, our main discussion today. Uh, Romans chapter 8, 28. I want you to follow me from there. Look at it very closely on the screen or in your Bible. The Bible says there, and we know that all things, how many things? All how many things? All, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the call. Let's dissect this verse a little bit. If you look at this verse, you can see what the Bible is saying. All things work together for those that love God, for the call. This verse is not saying that these all things are good things. Are you with me? This verse is not saying that these all things are good things. Because in this all things, there are the bad, the good, and the ugly one coming. 
But whatever it is and whatever shape it's taking, they all will walk for the good of your life. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Another thing that verse is not saying, it's not saying that it is for everyone. It's not saying because it says, for to those who does what? Love God. Stop right there. So, it is not for everyone. It is for the people that have loved God. Remember, yeah. I started from the beginning of Romans. Yeah. To take us through the process of justification and redemption and sanctification. <laughs> and from that point, the people that now gave their life, sorry that, they are the ones that love God. They are the ones that are covered by grace. They are the ones that are the call. Yes. Are you with me? Because they have come into the fold. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now, the Bible says there, let me take this step by step. And we know. And we know. That all things work it. Let me pause right there. I wish it is the way Paul says it. That everyone knows that all things truly work together. Because if you know it, you will not be afraid of anything. I, I, you understand what I'm saying? If you know that all things truly work together for you, I will just be doing, do, doing my normal thing. Obstacles come. Oh, oh, you're going to be my stepping stone to my blessing. When something happens, because I know it, I'm just going to be, woo -hoo. you are just my stepping stone to my blessing. But not everyone knows it that way. I wish everyone understands. I wish everyone gets that knowledge to say, I know it. In our Bible study on Thursday, I get an analogy. I remember one time we were playing, uh, uh, Cavalier was playing with um, Golden State. It was the finals. I didn't get to watch the game, but I watched the clips at the news after the game. So we saw the game, the scores of the game. So we knew who won the game. But I happened to be somewhere where some people were watching the same game full. I had already known the scores. But these people had not watched the game before. So to them, it felt like they were watching the game anew. So they were all excited. Oh, no! Courage! Let go the ball! And they were all excited about how Curry was making the moves. And, how, and they were jumping up when they make a basket. And I sat there. But this course has already been announced. We know this yes. course. Yes. I know. They, yes. To them, they didn't know. So they were excited. Yes. But I was calm. Because I already knew how the game ended. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to me, I know that all things will work together. <laughs> because I know the end of the game. But to someone who doesn't know, it's going to be a troubled state. Mind upsetting troubled state. What is it is going on? Lord, why is this trouble and trial coming my way? Lord, what is this happening to me? Yesterday one, today another, tomorrow I'm going to face another one. Lord, what is going on? Because I know the end. All things shall work together. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how deep it is. But something is working out for somebody here today. Yeah. I said something is working out for you. Yeah. I don't care how bad it might be. Oh, it's working to your favor. Yeah. Somebody shout amen. amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Yeah. We know. Let me say this. One of the greatest killers of many people is lack of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. It's lack of yeah. knowledge. Yeah. Because they don't know. Yeah. There's a saying that we, we always say, what you don't know is bigger than you. What you don't know 
is bigger than you. But if you know it, then it becomes a simple, easy problem. Follow me. Knowledge is very important. And that's why Paul prayed an important prayer to the people of Ephesus because of knowledge. Is it possible you can give me that verse in Ephesians 1, 15 through 19? Is it? Okay. Follow me here. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and loved unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks, but most importantly, making mentions of you in what? In my what? In my prayer. So Paul was praying for them constantly for something. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Watch this. I'm going to take this slowly. The spirit, the, Paul was praying to God for this, to give them this. To give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the what? In the knowledge of him. Who is the him? Jesus. Now watch this. That the eyes of their understanding shall be enlightened, that they may do what? No. Oh my God. That they do that no. what? No. Know what is the hope of his calling. Hold it right there. Just leave that verse there for me. For Paul to have taken his prayer needs to the Lord, for this must be so important to him. He said, Lord, as you give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation, I pray that you will open their eyes so that they will know what is the purpose for their calling. Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. That's my prayer for us here tonight. Yeah. That prayer that Paul prayed, Lord, that your people's eyes shall be opened for them to know why you have called us. I want you to underline that word, what is the hope of his calling? There are three things there, but I don't want to, that's not my main, that what we're talking about. The first one is, what is the hope of his calling? The second one is, what is the riches of, his, of the glory of his inheritance? Go to verse 19. And the third one is, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? I'm, we're going to talk about that some other time. But the main one I'm trying to talk about is, Paul, knowledge is power. And so Paul <coughs> wanted and prayed hard that the people should be filled with knowledge. Go back to where we are reading, Romans. Now he says that we may know. So knowledge is what I pray tonight that you know. Because when you know the end of the game, come on, let me talk to you here. If you know how the game has ended, then you will not be scared even when you're losing the game. You will not be afraid even when your team is losing the match. Because you already know the end of the game. Are you with me? When you know the end of the game, you will just be dancing even when the devil is giving the uppercut. Power. Well, you can give me now. I already know the end. Yes. Yes. I already know how the game ends because I know that at the end, I will become a winner. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let me take this thing a little deeper here. The Bible says that all things, how many things? All things. This is, I mean, if there is nothing else that should excite you, this all things should be the excitement tonight. All things, not some things, not half things, but how many things again? All things work it out good for them that love God. Uh, uh, who has an idea here for me? 
Read NIV, that same verse. Because 